since uh, the decision was made by the Supreme Court that abortion was legal. We're in a terrible mix, a terrible situation. But it didn't end there. The next generation got worse. What one generation does in excess, the next does. I mean, does in moderation, the next does in excess. Because you see, after that came not just the acceptance, but the celebration of that which the Bible calls an abomination as homosexuals began their radical push to be recognized by law as a specially protected class of people. On October the 28, 2009, President Barack Obama signed into law the Local Law Enforcement Hate Crimes Prevention Act. Among other things, the bill adds a gender, gender identity, and sexual orientation to the list of protected categories under federal hate crimes law. This effectively places every homosexual, pedophile, transgendered, and other abominable sexual orientation in a special federally protected class under federal hate crimes law. Now, I don't know that it's been used on a widespread basis as a tool of persecution against the church, but there is no doubt whatsoever that it's on the books and it has opened the door for such persecution against any pastor or clergy who would openly speak out against the abhorrent behavior of homosexuality, even though he believes he's just teaching what the Bible says. And already, I'm sure that you've seen it as well, business, certain business owners who, because of their religious beliefs, have refused their services to homosexual couples, have been fined, and some of them forced out of business. I assure you, my dear friend, that the day is coming here in America when pastors will be fined and or jailed for simply preaching the truth of the Bible. You said that wouldn't happen here. Well, we said that about a lot of other things in years gone by that are now reality. The day is coming when churches will be prosecuted on charges of <laughs> discrimination, I'll get it out in a minute, for not hiring a person who openly calls himself a homosexual when he applies for a job at the church. And eventually, no doubt, the fundamental conservative Christianity that we enjoy in some places will be attacked for promoting antisocial hate doctrine. You see, this law is just another example of political correctness gone mad. This homophobic paranoia has led Congress and the President to an act of delirium. They are confused and suffering from cerebral dysfunction. Or people singled out because of their sexual orientation and, and criminally attacked for it? Of course they are. And people should be prosecuted for doing that. But people are singled out and uh, you know, targeted for criminality for any number of things. Maybe because of what side of town they live on or what color their skin is or any number of things. Am I, am I being too paranoid? No. You see, the biblical definition of the one man and one woman marriage, is it under attack? Of course it is. <clears throat> if you don't think so, then let me, let me see if I can you know, help your memory just a minute. How many of you remember the name Carrie Prejean? Carrie Prejean was a contestant in the uh, Miss America contest in 2009, Miss USA contest. And she was asked the simple question of what her beliefs were about marriage. And she responded, and I'm going to quote with this, and she said, I think that I believe that a marriage should be between a man and a woman. No offense to anybody out there, but that's how I was raised. Now, 
How much simpler and more straightforward of an answer could she possibly give than that? She was simply given an honest question to an ask, a question she was asked about her beliefs. She didn't make any derogatory remark about homosexuals and even said that it was not her intention to offend anyone with her answer. And yet she was lambasted by a host of liberals in the media and by the homosexual activists. She was later stripped of her Miss California title on grounds of, quote, continual breach of contract issues, end quote. Now you can believe what you want to believe about it, but I know why Carrie Prejean was so persecuted. She was persecuted because she dared to take a stand on the biblical truth. And that's why people persecuted her. You see, biblical authority has all but vanished in America. In most Christian churches today, you would be appalled to find out how many people go to church without a Bible, without ever having any intent of opening a Bible. <coughs> the Bible is some peripheral book. It's not the central theme of who we are. It's just something we carry along with us. So I ask you, has the virus reached the brain? Well, if that wasn't enough in 2009, how much worse do you think it is today in 2016? Let me, let me again remind you, as disgusting as it was about to hear about Olympic athlete Bruce Jenner's decision to change his sex to that of a female and call himself Caitlin, there was something about Jenner's story to me that was far more revolting and disheartening. You see, after he made his public announcement, he suddenly became a national hero, an icon in America. Across the airwaves of our great land, he was uh, uh, praised and applauded for that brave decision. His picture as a female who calls himself Caitlin has been splashed on nearly every magazine and newspaper in the country. He has his own TV show, not in any derogatory fashion that people spoken about Jenner, but to praise this sick man for his sinfulness. I even read one article that says he has become extremely wealthy through the publicity that he's received. You know, and I, I want to just be honest with you, I feel sorry for Bruce Jim. His confusion about his sexual identity and his rejection of what God made him, to me speaks of a man who has fallen headlong into the darkest of sin. And although I'm sure he would say otherwise, I assure you that his decision is not going to bring him true joy and peace in his life. And he's going to have an eternity to think about that. But what is really eye-opening is the realization that so many Americans applaud and fully accept Jenner's transgendered lifestyle and many of them call themselves Christians. My daughter came to me shortly after this all took place and she said, Daddy, she said, I, I, I can't believe what I'm seeing on Facebook. I said, what are you talking about, baby girl? She said, Daddy, all of my Christian friends on Facebook are applauding Bruce Jenner for his truthfulness and for his coming out. What? What about the Bible? What does God have to say about that situation? Does anybody even care? Nobody cares what the Bible says, for goodness sakes. Come on, preacher. Catch up with the times. And we as Christians are silent. Just let it pass. Let it continue to accumulate on the mountain of sin. I told uh, Brother Bobby and 
Miss Gwen this morning, we were with them and I we were talking politics a little bit. I said, you know, it's not, I, you know, and I'm not here to give a political speech, but I don't, I don't care for Barack Obama. I don't like what he's done. I don't like a lot of his decisions. But he's not the problem. He's just one person. The one thing that's really the problem is that a majority of the people in this great land was stupid enough to let that guy. That's the problem. And spiritual depravity reached reached the pinnacle last year. You know what I have to say about you. And if you don't know about this, obviously you must have been on a different planet on June 26, 2015. But I'm going to tell you, that was, listen to what I'm saying, that was the darkest day in American history. Far worse than December the 7th, 1941, Pearl Harbor Day, or 9-11-01. For as bad as those days were, and the loss of lives of American citizens, they do not compare to the day that the great United States of America died spiritually. Sin sickness has been dragging us down for many years, but on that day, you should put it on your chalkboard. June 26, 2015, we took our final gasping breath and died spiritually as a nation. On that dark day, the decision of two men and three women drove the last nail into our national coffin. In a 5-4 decision, the Supreme Court ruled that same-sex marriage is legally protected by the United States Constitution and must be afforded all the same benefits as heterosexual marriages. The five justices who ruled in favor of this decision are Sotomayor, Kagan, Ginsburg, Breyer, and Kennedy. The four, the four who voted against it were Robert, uh, Scalia, Scalia, however you say his name, the man who just passed away, uh, Alito and Thomas. Now our president, Barack Obama, was totally wrong because he praised them for their brave decision. I was totally opposed to what he had to say. But you know, he said something that was true. It actually hit the nail on the head. Because the president said, and I quote, it affirms what millions of Americans already believe in their hearts, end quote. And to that statement, he was perfectly correct. Yes, millions of Americans believe, you see, that homosexuality is simply an alternate lifestyle. It doesn't matter what the Bible has to say. Millions of Americans think that same-sex marriage is perfectly normal and legitimate. Millions of Americans see this decision by the United States Supreme Court not as an encouragement into sinful behavior, but as a giant step forward in our national evolution towards providing freedom and joy to all Americans. And many of those millions of Americans sit in the pews of our churches every Sunday. God help us. Where is the voice of the church? This abomination was manifested in yet another abomination. As if to rub it in our face, the president had the White House lit up in rainbow colors to celebrate and show his support for this abominable act. Now what Mr. Obama did not say in his speech was this decision culminates the path of rebellion and destruction that our country has been on for the last 50 years. He didn't say that. What he did not say was that we have taken the final step of sinful depravity that will bring down the judgment of Almighty God upon this once great nation. What he did not say is that the spiritual rabid virus has now reached the brain and there is no remedy. 2 Chronicles 36, 16 says, But they mocked the messengers of God and despised His words. 
God's word. They despised his words and misused his prophets until the wrath of God rose against his people till there was no remedy. You see, contrary to what many people understand, there is, there is a red line with God. You can go too far with God. There is a place where you go far enough against God and He just writes you off. There is, according to Bible, a sin unto death. There is a place where God looks at a nation and says, you have gone too far and there is nothing I can do with you now except judge you. You can go too far with God. Again, I, I do believe that God would forgive America if we would repent and come back. I know He would. But God also knows that America will never do it. Now listen to what the prophet Jeremiah said about another country some 2,000 years ago named Judah. Listen to what he said about them because they are a perfect picture of our country. He said, Thine own wickedness shall correct thee and thy backsliding shall reprove thee. Know therefore and see that it is an evil thing and bitter that thou hast forsaken the Lord thy God and that my, my fear is not in thee, saith the Lord God of hosts. The Apostle Paul wrote in the book of Romans about a society that refuses time after time to respond to God's call to repentance and insists on going down their rebellious path of wickedness. The last straw, go read it for yourself, Romans chapter 1, the final insult, if you will, against God, the one last act of rebellion comes when there is a warm embrace of homosexuality, a horrible sin that God calls an abomination. And Paul said this. Listen to what he said. Romans 1 verse 26. For this cause God gave them up. Did you hear that? 